I'm on the Invincible booth here at the Convention Center, and a couple of people have asked me about sort of hull dynamics, fluid dynamics. What are steps? What are chines in the hull? Why do you have all the different bow shapes? So I thought, last day of the show, we'll do some little educational one-on-ones. So we have uh, a 39 Invincible. This is a Michael Peters hull. So this is the sort of traditional core of Invincible and their foundation, really. Proper deep V hull design. What does that mean? Well, that is a, a, a proper V, so you cut through the water better. A bay boat will have a narrower V or a shallower V, and that will sort of be like that. So more stability, uh, but a harder ride when you hit a wave because you've obviously got more surface area. And the deeper the V, the softer the ride. So naturally, you've got quite a nice shear to the um, bower section. You're going to be able to cut through that water really well. But then you also have these chines. What do the chines do? Well, obviously, water comes up, runs across the hull, hits this lip here, and is pushed back down. So the greater this distance, the more lift that you have but you also want to have a nicely balanced boat. So there's a lot of geometry that goes on to make sure this performs well. We have these two shapes in the side profile of the hull. What do these do? Well, these are called steps. So as the water is running down through here, you have air that is drawn down through this channel, and that releases or gives the hull air bubbles and it reduces friction as you go. But Jack, if you come up through here, you'll see the hull profile as you come through is then stepped back a couple of inches and then the chines then start again. This is reducing the wetted surface of the boat. So what do I mean by that? A deep V traditional planing hull will have the sort of, if this was the hull length, your water line as you're running would be sort of further up here. The more steps you have, the more you're able to reduce that wetted surface further back through the transom, have better fuel efficiency, more speed, less drag. So we have another step. So this was one step up, two inches off from the bow section, and now we've got a nice deep step all the way through, and then now we're going to be running to what is traditionally called your planing pad. This is where now the hull is going to be sitting, and then when we come right to the back, you have this bustle on the aft section. So your true transom is the aft section right at the back there. These our interceptor type blades um, and what they do is are constantly making little um, changes so that they're running the boat and trimming her for you like uh, automatic trim tabs basically but then this section has an overhang where the engines go and you can see you have the water pickup here on the mercury lower unit so the water will run straight off from the bottom of the boat and then hit the gear cases normally once you're planing a fabrana about here getting loads of cooling into the motors you want to have a nice balance between stepped hull design, having a planing pad that's not too shallow, but traditionally, on a stepped hull, the last section is a little less of a proper deep V because you want a balance of performance and offshore capability. So you'll find in this type of design, you'll have a much greater deep V in the forward section and midships, and then it will tail off at the aft section. What does that do? We well, have all of that punch to be able to cut through any wave that you want to, but then you have that balance of economy and speed once you get going.